I don't, I don't have a problem. I just have a hobby. Buying equipment that I think would be useful to me instead of paying someone to do it or renting it. You buy it once for like, I don't know, a third of the price or quarter of the price. And then you can do the same thing the person you bought it from did, and that is let it sit dilapidated after you used it once. This is a industrial PTO powered wood chipper that I bought. Yeah, how much you think that thing cost new? Probably like five or six grand. I paid $1,300 for it. I'm gonna use it once and probably would have, no, I'll use it more than once. What am I talking about? I'm supposed to be gassing myself up here. Anyways, let me show you the problems with uh, buying used equipment. Usually it's in worse condition than new equipment. Uh, this is my 20 year old piece of crap, Bobcat 337 excavator. I paid $15,000 for it. It's got a bucket, it's got a thumb, it's got two tracks. It's got horsepower, let's go. It's got a rump exfoliating seat cushion. Completely missing one of the drive handles. Oh, wait, actually I changed it, that's it. There's part of it right there. Can you see it or is it too dark? Yeah, that's it. You can swivel the boom and it's completely uh, broken. The uh, manifold was leaking and I don't know, maybe a gallon of hydraulic fluid every few hours, which is pretty bad. Ugh. Yeah, it's just disgusting in here. And so I thought, how good of an idea would it be to just fix it? I mean, at what point does a hobby become a problem? I don't think I have a problem. I'm doing great. My life's going great. I took the manifold out of the excavator back in May, like five months ago, six months ago, and then had it repaired by a repair shop because I didn't have time to take it apart. And also I looked at, I took one look at the manual and decided that I was gonna break it if I did take it apart. And then I never reinstalled it for like that entire time. It's just sitting here parked in the driveway and you can't move it because the manifold was disconnected. And I just connected it this past weekend and it was, it was a huge pain in the butt. I think it's still leaking. Let's see, let's tighten some of these fittings. Yeah, I think it's just leftover oil. I'm just gonna suck that oil up with a paper towel and then we'll check later and see if it's re-oiled itself. Five months ago, I paid for tree trimmers to trim these eucalyptus trees because they were really tall. I saved a bunch of money, of course, by telling them to just leave the stumps here instead of taking them with them. Uh, and But that meant that it's my problem. That was like five months ago again? No, that was six, that was even longer ago. I, I think I might be an idiot. Paying people sometimes is the right answer, but then you won't have an excavator. Hey, potato, one day all of this will be yours. Mm, interesting. Yeah, yeah, fully tightened. It's, it's, there's just the little things. There's thousands of little things. This is absurd. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, we're moving. Kind of. No, we're not moving. Huh. Interesting. Maybe we're out of hydraulic fluid? No? There's plenty of fluid in there. All right, what's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? Do I just keep trying? Oh, let's go! Let's freaking go! It's, it's like slow to take off the other way. I don't know why. I think there's air in the line. Hey, what's up? You want anything from Wendy's? Hell yeah, I want something from Wendy's. Give me Dave's single with cheese. Uh, get get Chelsea okay. spicy chicken okay. nuggets. Okay, chicken nuggets, Dave's single with cheese. You want that uh, meal? Uh, yeah, one of them a meal. It's swiveling kind of slow. I don't know the air on the line. <laughs> Well, now it's dead. <laughs> Where's my jumper? You gotta get out of the way. I can't get out of the way because you stole my jumper. You stole my jumper, I can't get out of the way. Do I need to jump you? I, yeah, I can't move. <laughs> I can't move. This is my really cool jumper cable set and it's good because uh, I've you, been using my battery and my bear trap. Free. You, got that, you got that jumper for free. I got this out of William Osmond's uh, 2000, <laughs> uh, 1999 Ford Taurus. <laughs> Oh, yes! We did it! Let's go! Let's go! Issues right now are the blade continuously falls, which is really annoying because if you're facing the other way or not paying attention, it'll just keep digging into the ground, which is what happened right over there. You can see it's scraping the asphalt. 
Uh, the second problem is that the tracks are reversed. So I think the previous owner probably did that on purpose, but this is the, the track controls and they're, they are the wrong way because the blade's on the front and I think they made it to so the blade's on the back. So that basically means, uh, yeah, uh, uh, all right, new battery. Interesting. Would you believe me if I told you there was a new problem? <laughs> I think the alternator is not connected properly. So if you look in here, I saw something sparking when it was running and it was having a, it was having a lot of trouble starting. And then once it did start, I saw this and it was sparking. It was just, it was just arcing to this. So I think that it's uh, not charging the batteries <laughs> and the engine is just running off battery. I hate this. I hate this. I just want to drive my excavator. I just want to drive it around. I want to just, I want to sit in the excavator and I want to drive it around. So this is the, the bolt that was holding that, uh, the eyelet that's coming out the alternator. This is like the positive terminal of the alternator, I think. It has literally EDM. It has discharge machined the bolt. So as the alternator creates voltages, they don't have anywhere to go because this was disconnected. So it was arcing and absolutely chewing away at the bolt. This is bad. Like basically it's like a, yeah, EDM or like a plasma cutter, just like blasting away yeah. at that metal the whole time. It's exploding the part metal particles off the net. Yeah, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you sure you should be standing in there? It's like an alchemist circle. <laughs> Day number five. I spent five days accomplishing nothing. The whole, the whole yard's overgrown and I have to mow that before the city finds me. And so far, on day five, I've done none of that. I haven't fixed anything. Let me show you what I have to do today. Excavator, the drive used to be reversed. So when you press forward on the sticks, the excavator drives backwards. And I looked at some YouTube videos to try to like, to try to tell how it was supposed to come from the factory. And I'm pretty sure the previous owner did actually reverse it. So I took this whole floor panel off and this cover underneath that joystick so I could switch two fittings, took like, what, four hours? And once I got it all back together, the, the boom and the arm stopped working. I figured it out, but that only took me another three hours. When I put this cover back on, when I had taken this, this metal cover off right here, there is a switch that changes the direction of the control for the arm. And the cover, the panel, had knocked it in the halfway position. And it needs to either be all the way backwards or all the way forwards. Three hours. I had to read the manual to figure that one out. But the first thing on today's agenda is to replace the turn signal in my car. I figured it out. All you have to do is take the entire headlight out to replace your turn signal bulb. Why? Uh, yeah, this one's for a project for another day. 